We've had the decision by the finance ministers to erect a firewall. Um, we have some European politicians, Mario Monti, talking about getting close to the end of the crisis. What's your take on that? Well, first of all, it's important that the firewall effect has been boosted significantly. Let's not forget it's not just the FSF, ESM, it's also the central bank, it's also possible new money in the IMF. This provides a fundamental condition for moving forward. However, it provides time, so more needs to be done, especially by governments in sensitive countries to carry on their reform programs. What about growth, though, the fact that you've got um, such difficulties in those sensitive countries of, of actually being able to promote growth? Will, they be, will that growth come from those reform programs? In the short term, growth will be flat or negative in a number of countries because of fiscal consolidation. That's inevitable. But in the medium term, which may come up sooner than later, we will see the first benefits of structural measures that have been taken already. So we are confident growth will progressively strengthen itself over the medium term. But, but will, will, will we see, I mean, if you look at the structural problems in the Eurozone, you still have a, a, a situation of high current account surplus countries and deficit countries. You've got this structural imbalance. Is it going to be addressed by those reform programs? Well, they should, because in order to be sustainable, growth in Europe must be also balanced, meaning that uh, deficit countries must grow more and surplus countries must continue to grow only that they must open up more. For instance, in the case of Germany, Germany would benefit a lot in terms of higher investment and growth if it were to liberalize its service sector. So in, in fact, um, in, w w w do you see then if, if Germany were to, to, to make those changes that that would actually uh, help with those structural imbalances that you've mentioned? That would definitely address that because more investment would mean s uh, smaller surplus. And as I said, it would be achieved by more growth, not less growth. The drama of current account adjustment, it, it has usually uh, has a negative impact on growth. We can have a different way out of the crisis in Europe. What would it be? Can you tell us more about it? How, yes. do, we, how do we get out of we that We get out of that by uh, having reforms taking place in all countries, not just in the deficit countries, which of course need them. Uh, we can do that by also strengthening financial surveillance in Europe so that unsustainable capital flows do not happen again as they had in the recent past. And in surplus countries, more domestic investment would, gr would allow more growth and less surplus. What about the structure of the European, of the Eurozone? Do you think that that needs to change? I mean, with the, German, the new German president just recently said that you know, the solution for Europe is actually more Europe, not less. Well, one lesson from the crisis is that the euro area construction at the beginning was, to say the least, insufficient. We know that more needs to be done in the fiscal, and we have the fiscal pact. In the financial, we have now the firewall instruments and financial regulation in the growth agenda, which has always been paid lip service. Now we must mean business and do the reforms that boost growth. Do you agree with the, uh, with the idea that um, in order to have a single currency you need to have a common debt? You have to have fiscal convergence, which is uh, strengthened by euro bonds, which is strengthened by common and agreed and respected fiscal rules. Do you think that will be the end game of the, uh, of the European debt crisis? That, moving that towards will be that? the way out of this major crisis. That will put the euro era in a totally different, more sustainable path. Realistically, how long do you think it will take to, take to achieve that, uh, that uh, objective? Well, that's difficult to say. It could be much sooner than we expect. Crises accelerate change. And we've seen a lot of change taking place in, say, 24 months. Do you think Italy, uh, the, the, the path on which Italy is at the moment, assuming that the labour market reforms go through, is going to be uh, sufficient to promote medium-term growth? Well, the Italian government is tackling problems that have been there for decades. And is doing that in a compressed time period, and is doing that simultaneously which means that there is a chance that the benefits of structural reforms will accumulate. You reform product markets, more competition, labor markets, you adjust the fiscal dimension. If all those things happen at once, then the benefits can be much more than the sum of the components. I spoke to Jürgen Stark yesterday and he said that he thought that the fiscal compact had been breached by Spain. Do you agree? Well, we have to be uh, cognizant of the fact that we are now in a very delicate transition period. 
the fiscal compact is the model for the future which starts now. But at the same time, we must recognize that the weakness of the euro area is still a source of concern. It is very delicate. We should not make mistakes in one direction or the other. Do you, do you agree with Maurits Kramer, who um, from S&P just recently said that he thinks that the Greeks will probably have to eventually restructure their debt again? The Greek debt restructuring is important. It could have been achieved a year ago. We would have lost, we would have saved money and time. Well, that's done. Now what needs to be done is that the Greek government implements reforms that they have voted. This is the key difference. If they don't do that, then we're back to square one. Do you think that Portugal should go ahead with the restructuring earlier rather than later? Portugal is in a fine, uh, tight rope. It has to do a number of things, more competitiveness, fiscal adjustment, look at that. Uh, it is feasible. It must be done impeccably. So you don't see a restructuring in Portugal? We see a country which ha can have different outcomes, one of which might be that, but I think that's not necessarily needed. What would you say was the biggest threat to global growth at the moment? It remains the euro area. What about oil? Oil is a problem which has different components, a short-term geopolitical risk because supply is still inadequate. But also in the longer term, I would ask what would be the long-term consequence of the structural change in demand for oil coming from fast-growing emerging economies like China. Is the oil supply sustainable in the longer term as well? What was your main message to participants here today in uh, Chernobyl? Two messages. First, that it is possible to conceive a growth strategy for Europe. Second, that in order to achieve it, everybody must do its homework. It's not just some countries that have to do it, including the European Union level. Thank you very much. Thank you.